Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bad habitu fillah Continuing on in our study of the three ways of forgiveness by Ibn Rajab which is an explanation of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam a hadith uh, Qudsi and uh, we were discussing the second way to forgiveness, the first way being that uh, a person should have hopeful supplication, that they should make dua. And the second way of forgiveness that Ibn Rajab mentioned is by making istighfar. And we talked a little bit about istighfar in Toba. And as we were discussing, the majority of the scholars are still of the opinion that it's permissible for the repentant servant to say, I repent to Allah, meaning that they, they make astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, that I, I make uh, toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He may also promise Allah to never return to a particular act of disobedience because such a determination and intention is already obligated upon him in the first place, the intention not to sin. For this determination, Allah said to the one who kept run, returning to sins, I have forgiven my servant, so let him do as he pleases. So the issue was that some of the scholars said that if you are still doing a certain sin and you don't necessarily have intention to leave that sin, then you should not say, uh, you know, I, I make wa atubu ilayk, that you should not say, I, I make it toba to you because you're not sincere. But majority of the scholars say, no, that is, it's, it's uh, permissible for a person to say this, even if they are still in sin, that this is still a type of ibadah. Another supporting evidence of the permissibility of saying this is the hadith that mentions supplication for someone to say when concluding any sin. In it, the Prophet wasallam concluded by saying, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. I seek your forgiveness and I repent to you. So meaning this is the expiation for a, a, a majlis, for any time that you're having a, a sitting, that you should say a certain dua. And at the end of the dua, uh, the one making supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. I seek uh, forgiveness from Allah and repent to you. The best way for a person to ask for forgiveness is to start by praising his Lord, then to confess the sin, then ask for Allah's forgiveness. An example of this is the hadith of Shidad ibn Aus radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayyid al-Istaghfar and Tukul, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha ila ant, khalaktani wa ana abduka, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma istata'atu. أعوذ بك من شر ما سنعت أبوء لك بنعمتك علي وأبوء لك بذنبك بذنبي فاغفر لي فإنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت. The best way to seek is forgiveness is to say, O Allah, you are my Lord. There is no god worthy of worship but you. You created me, and I am your servant, and I abide by your covenant. And promise, as much as I'm able, I seek refuge with you from the evil of what I have done. I acknowledge before you your favors on me, and I confess to you my sin. So forgive me, because surely no one can forgive sins except you. This is Tawheed, in fact, because you're seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this is uh, Tawheed uh, al-Ibadah, or Tawheed Al-Uluhiyya, meaning this is the Tawheed of the servant worshipping Allah alone. So this is exemplifying Islamic monotheism. Abdullah bin Amr, radiallahu uh, ta'ala anhu, narrated that Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, said, O Messenger of Allah, teach me a supplication that I may use in prayer, that I, might, that I may use in my prayer. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Kulallahumma, إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي ظُلْمًا كَثِيرًا وَلَا يَغْفِرُ الظُّنُوبَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ فَاغْفِرُ لِي مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ عِنْدَكَ وَارْحَمْنِي إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So the supplication is 
say, O oh Allah, I have certainly wronged myself with much transgression, and no one forgives sins except you. So forgive me with forgiveness from yourself, and have mercy upon me. Surely you are the oft forgiving, the most merciful. And also from the reported ways to ask forgiveness is that a servant says, so all of these are ways to ask to make istighfar uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah ala adheem alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum wa atubu ilayh. I ask forgiveness from Allah the greatest, other than whom there is no God worthy of worship, the ever-living, the controller of everything, and I repent to him. It is recorded in Sahih al-Bukhari from Abi Huraira, radiyallahu ta'anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Wallahi, inni la yastaghfirullaha wa atubu ilayhi fi liyomi akthara min sab'ina marra. The Prophet, it's reported in Sahih al-Bukhari, the hadith of Abi Huraira, Anhu, that the Prophet وسلم, said, By Allah, I ask Allah's forgiveness and repent to him during the day more than 70 times. In Sahih Muslim, from al Agar al Muzni, that the Prophet وسلم, said, Innu liyuhanu ala qalbi wa inni liyastaghfirullah fi kulli yawmin mi'ata marra. Uh, the Prophet والسلام, said in this hadith, Certainly my heart becomes preoccupied, but I still seek Allah's forgiveness a hundred times in a day. SubhanAllah. This is a beautiful uh, faida here because the Prophet والسلام, said himself that his heart becomes preoccupied and he was the best in ibadah. That sometimes things in the dunya, they distract you. You get confused. You get distracted. You're busy with work. You're busy with your family. You're busy with your money. You're busy with your vehicle. You're busy with this and that and all kind of tests in the dunya. Certainly my heart becomes preoccupied, but I still seek Allah's forgiveness a hundred times in a day. So in conclusion, the remedy for sins is to seek forgiveness. And whoever sins becomes... Uh, who, who, whosoever their sins become too numerous for him to even count, meaning someone has too many sins, they can't even begin to count, then let him still ask Allah's forgiveness. For surely Allah knows everything and counts everything as he says, يَوْمَ يَبْعَثُهُمُ اللَّهُ جَمِيعًا فَيُنَبِّيَهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا أَحْسَاهُ اللَّهُ وَنَسُوهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al -Kirim, on the day when Allah will resurrect them all and inform them of what they did, Allah had counted it while they forgot. So it lets us know that even though we have sinned, that we should still ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should still say astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk, and we should also, of course, supplicate to Allah often, make lots of dua, because what happens is a lot of people, when they get overburdened by their sins. They just feel they're too far from Allah. So then they just stop making ibadah. You know, you have how many people say, you, you see them, and, and I was listening to a brother, he was just describing this one of the du'as. He was just talking about how some of the people become overwhelmed. You see them on the street, and you say, brother, I haven't seen you in the masjid. And then they say, you know, man, I'm going through something. So when they're going through something, they get further from Allah. When in fact, when you're going through something, you should come closer to Allah. But it seems to be our natural inclination that when we get we get overwhelmed by our sins and we're drowning in sins, we're drinking all the time, we're with our girlfriend all the time, we're smoking weed all the time, we're doing this all the time. We just our hearts become so dirty, we just feel we're too clean too dirty to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is a big mistake. And in fact, we see this sunnah from the some of the Christians. Because what they do is they feel that, uh, or, or the Catholics specifically, is that they go to the priest to make their repentance. Because they say, hey, I, I'm too dirty. I have too many sins. You know, I'm a wicked sinner. But I need to go to someone who is holy, who has devoted their life to worshiping Allah, so I will go and confess my sins to him. Oh, Father, I have sinned. This is what they say. And then they want him to give them the repentance and carry that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is a, this is shirk. 
So the Muslims have to be far away from that. The last third way that Ibn Rajab mentioned, he said the third way, which is Tawheed. And all of that, what we talked about, make an istighfar, make a supplication, all of this involves Tawheed, Tawheed al-Ibadah, and Tawheed al rububiyyah and Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. All of those things are involved because you're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes. You're seeking forgiveness from Him by His divine names. Ya Ghafur, Ya Ghafar, Ya Tawab, Tawab rahim so you're, you're, you're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his divine names and attributes. And you're supplicating. So this is ibadah. That's tawheed al-ibadah. And you are calling his divine names and attributes. And you are uh, also acknowledging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship, his rububiyyah. So the third way is just specifically tawheed. He said the third way to obtain forgiveness is by sincerely believing in tawheed. That only Allah alone should be worshipped. And in fact, it is the greatest way, subhanAllah, that's why it's so important to fo focus on Aqidah. This is why we have to focus on our Tawheed. And we don't listen to those people who say Tawheed is not mentioned in the Quran, or Tawheed, or Aqidah is not mentioned in the Quran, or all of these crazy, false statements which are mabni al-batil. They're built, those statements themselves are built upon batil. Because the person is building false principles and belittling the study of Tawheed, which is not something you study in 10 minutes and 30 minutes, but rather Tawheed, we, all, we actualize uh, our, our studies of Tawheed by continually to stu studying Tawheed and revising Tawheed, revising the monotheism so it can be practical in our lives. So Imam Ibn Rajab said, whoever loses Tawheed loses forgiveness. And whoever comes to Allah with Tawheed has come with the greatest means of earning his forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ وَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرَ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Surely Allah does not forgive that others should be worshipped along with him, but he forgives whatever he is less than that to whom he wills. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives if you die upon other sins, but if you die upon kufr and shirk, you know, those things which totally negate tawheed, then you are mustahik lil aquba. Then you are worthy, deserving of his punishment. So tawheed, learning tawheed, what it means, how to practice it by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the greatest thing you can do and the greatest way to gain forgiveness. Whoever comes with Tawheed and along with it the earth full of sins, Allah will meet him with as much forgiveness. But it should be understood that this is Allah's decision. If he wills, he may forgive the person or he may take him to account for his sins. Whoever the final result is that such a person or however, the final result is that such a person who is actualized and died upon Tawheed will not remain forever in the fire. Rather, he will be taken out and allowed to enter paradise. So this is the belief of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that the people, Ahl Kaba'il, the people who do major sins, he was smoking weed all the time, he was always doing this, he was always doing this, but he died as a Muslim, or she died as a Muslim, she still was from Ahl Tawheed, then maybe Allah will will put them in the fire to purify them, to pay for some of their sins, and take them out of the fire eventually. This is what happens to the major sinner. But some groups, like the Khawarij, like other groups, believe that people, if you, if you die upon sins, especially major sins, you're in the hellfire forever. This is what they believe. But this is a false belief. This is the belief of Ahl Bidah. But Ahl Sunnah has the belief that Tawheed, and that, uh, and that Ahl Tawheed, can be will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, some scholars said that the one who actualized Tawheed will not even be thrown into the fire as the disbelievers will, nor will he reside therein as disbelievers will. So if a servant's Tawheed is complete and he is sincere to Allah in it and fulfills all its conditions with his heart, tongue, limbs, or with his heart and tongue at the time of his death, then that would secure for him complete forgiveness for all previous sins he committed. It would also prevent him from entering the fire at all. So whoever actualizes Tawheed, 
with his heart completely empty of everything but a law out of love, honor, respect, fear, hope, and reliance, then that would remove all his sins and misdeeds, even if they were as much as the foam of the sea. Perhaps that they would even be exchanged for good deeds, as has been mentioned in the narrations of bad deeds being replaced with good ones. Undeniably, this Tawheed is the greatest medicine. If even a small mount was dropped on a mountain of sins and bad deeds, it will replace them all with good deeds. So that shows us how important Tawheed is. And we'll end with this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which illustrates this very important, the point that we're making about the importance of Tawheed, that Tawheed is the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Tawheed will give you forgiveness, that Tawheed uh, uh, will, will, will help you get your sins removed. The Prophet uh, Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala was on a donkey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, Atadri ma haq Allah al ibadi, wa ma haq al ibadi al Allah. So he said, O Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his servant? And the right of the servant upon Allah, the servant is you and I, we're, we're slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allah wa Rasulullah wa alam. He said, Allah and his messenger know best. And then uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him the answer. He said, Haq Allah al ibadi an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shayin. Wa haq al ibadi al Allah an la yu'adhiba man la yushriku bihi shayin. So he said, the right of Allah upon his servant is that the servant worships him and him alone and doesn't associate any partners with him. That's Allah's haq, is that you give him tawheed, that you worship him and him alone, Islamic monotheism. And he said, and the right of the servant upon Allah, meaning that you have a right upon Allah that Allah has given you, but you can't force that right. You can't take that right from Allah. It's all through his mercy and all through his granting. No one can force Allah to anything. But Allah has given us a haq over him. He said, Haq al ibadi Allah and la yu'adhiba min la yushriku bi shayin. And the right of Allah upon his servant, uh, the, and, the, the, and the right of the servant upon Allah is that he doesn't punish him if he does not associate any partners with him. Meaning, if you actualize. Tawheed, and that's why Muhammad ibn al Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he put this hadith in his chapter, which was entitled, uh, I believe, Bab Haqqaq Men Yuhaqqaq Tawheed, or something like this. Whoever actualizes Tawheed, because actualizing fully 100% Tawheed, this person is guaranteed Jannah. And this is narr in another narration of the Prophet, uh, the, about the one who Haqqaq Tawheed. Yeah, that they will be from the 70,000 people who enter Jannah uh, Bila Hisab uh, Bila Adab Wala Hisab That they will be entered into paradise with no accounting and no uh, uh, no punishment Those are the people who actualize Tawheed They actualize Tawheed So this is a right uh, the, the, It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right that you worship Him and Him alone and if you do it perfectly and know and at the ilm, seek knowledge and, and, and learn Tawheed and practice Tawheed because Tawheed is related to your Iman. When you do sins, this is an especially major sins, this is a nux of your Tawheed. It means your Tawheed is down because Tawheed and Iman, there's a, a strong relationship that you're not actualizing Tawheed. Because if you really knew, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the law, la fil fil sama, verily, Nothing is hidden from Allah in the earth or the heavens. When you know that, then you won't do certain sins that no one else can see and no one else can hear, but you still do those sins, but Allah sins because you, and you know, I mean, Allah sees, Allah sees that you're doing those sins. In Allah, Allah, there's nothing that's hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's actualized until He, because then you're, you're acknowledging that 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you. That he is Samir al-Basir. Al he's the all-hearing, he's the all-seeing. You believe that and you're practicing it. It has a, an ether on your ibadah. It has an effect upon you. The, the person who worship Allah alone and ta'budu allaha ka'annaka tara fa'in lam tukun tarahu fa'innahu yarak. To worship Allah, this is ihsan. To worship Allah and ta'budu allaha ka'annaka tara. As if you see him. But because you can't see him, know that he sees you. The one who does that actualizes tawheed. That ihsan. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And bless us to be of the muhsineen, wa mu'mineen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and bless us with ikhlas, with the battle of sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thus ends our study of the three ways to forgiveness by Imam Hafiz Ibn Rajib al-Hanbali. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.